Hello again, party people. Today, uh, we hit level three in Wani Kani. Now, I am happy about this. But, uh, I think the recording method I had been doing before had been working. So, today, we, or I am going to record myself going through these lessons. Looks like there's 50 items at the start of level three, at least. Um, and maybe having them all in a long form listenable format will help myself so i'll read through them as i go and we will work from there dry you have two on a stick two what well you can't tell because you're too dry someone put two somethings on this stick to dry but what they seem to have left them out for way or but they seem to have left them out for way too long was it meat fish cucumbers you have no clue but they're two very dry somethings that's for sure canopy this is a canopy see the cloth draping down the cloth draping down a little point in the middle holding it up you could sit under here and enjoy a bright summer day without getting any sun fingers this looks like the hand radical but smaller that's because it's just the fingers you don't always have room for a whole hand to be in a kanji, but there's always space for a few fingers. Origin. You have two legs coming up this radical. Between two legs is where you came from. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no matter how you look at it, these two legs are your origin. <laughs> Noted. Heart. Take a good look at this one. Kind of looks like a heart. Not the stereotypical Valentine's Day heart, though. Think of a real heart. Basically, there's a lump, the heart, in the middle, and three lines which make up the arteries that go in and out of the heart to keep you alive. This radical shows up a lot, so it shouldn't be too hard to learn as you go along. Remember, lump, heart, plus arteries equals a heart, like a real heart, not the fake, pretty kind. Okay, we got the quiz here. This was Origin. This was Canopy. And this was finger. This was two. Or was it dry? Oh, no, it was dry. This is heart. Finish. I think I have them set to go in batches of five right now. And direction. This radical looks like a dude running off to the right. He's heading in a very distinct direction. Which direction was it again? Go in that one direction. Fur. Do you remember the hair radical? This is like that, except now the hair is attached to a tail. Animals don't usually have hair, though. Instead, they have fur. Father. There are fins covering the treasure making up this radical. You pull away the fins and start digging with the X's, because X marks where the treasure is, right? That was a radical earlier. When you dig down, instead of finding treasure, you find your father. The shock of this in your imagination should help you to remember the meaning of this radical. Oh, Papa. Old. You have a cross on a mouth. That's a pretty religious mouth. <laughs> Who speaks the most about religion? Old people, mostly. Also, think about the teachings of religion itself. Also, pretty old. Age-wise, no matter how you look at it, everything about this radical is kind of old. Task. This looks a bit like a calendar with spaces for you to write in your tasks for the day. See those blank sections? Make sure you write down your daily tasks so you don't forget to do something important. Okay, I see it. Alright, this was fur. We got the tail coming up. This was old. Mouth and cross. This was father. Digging up his body. This is direction. Do go to the right. Uh, calendar. Got them all spaced out like so. Oh. Callan. Let's go. Task. Oh, it was not calendar. I'm a fool. Okay. Task. Okay. All right. 40 more to go. Arrow. You have a really big gun. Why? Because only big guns were able to will be able to shoot arrows. 
Bulls are pretty small, so the guns that shoot them can be any size. But you need a big gun if you want to shove an arrow in there and then shoot it at your enemies. Okay? Door. Where does the flag usually go? It goes over a door. I know, the radical usually means ground. But in this case, we're going to say the flag is in a doorway. Where is the top? Where the is the top of the door? Oh, where the dash is the top of the door. Okay. Poop. All right. There's something something sticking out of you while you're in private. It's poop. You can't just poop in public. That's illegal and gross in this day and age. So the next time something starts to come out of you when you're in private, think, ah, yes, it's poop. I think this looks like a dude squatting down. He's like on his knees, like got his arm out. And then we got the duker coming out of the bottom part. Very good. Okay. Towel. There's something draped over that stick. It's a towel. Imagine taking a wet towel and hanging it over a railing or stick so it won't get all musty and gross. It would look just like this. And life. The radical consists of a cow radical with the ground below it. If you have cows on solid ground, then you really do have a good life, I think. Sometimes this radical will show up without the sl slide part or the, yeah, without the slide part on the side too. Though, we'll treat them both as life. If you have cows on solid ground, you have a good life. Okay. Uh, cow. No, there was this gun. Arrow, arrow. This flag. No, door. Okay. Mm -hmm -hmm. This was towel. Cow on solid ground. Look at that. That dookie. This is door, not flag. Okay. 35. We got now. This is a hat on top of where the katakana for Ra. Think of Ra, the Egyptian god. When is Ra wearing a hat? Right now. It's always now because he never takes it off. No, really. Look it up. It's true. Hat. Do you know those rice paddy hats? The ones shaped just like this radical? That's why this radical is a hat. Ice. Remember the radical of, uh, for drop of liquid? This is two drops instead of one. When you see two drops, you should think the next stage of water. What is the next stage? Why? That is ice. Triceratops. Three horns represent the triceratops. One of the most awesome dinosaurs ever. Agreed. So, there's a leaf growing out of a square, which is normally a mouth, but not this time. The leaf is growing out of a stone. I mean, obviously, because leaves don't grow out of mouths. I hope. Anyway, picture a stone in the middle of nature with a leaf growing out of it, or just behind it, and you'll never forget this radical. Alright. Triceratops? Uh, tr shoot. What was this again? This is not the hat. Now. Oh, for Ra. Okay. Ra wears this hat. This was stone. Leaf coming up on top. This one was hat. This was ice. The next stage of water. And Ra for the katakana. Now. Gosh. Okay. Ra, forgive me. Just, I can't now alright now we go oh man that was rough on my end oh Never. this one or these ones collect this one right here is there a button to hear that again go ahead collect this one you can use what it was that Kone to talk about anything that's close to you Things that are close to you are easy to collect after all. Suru. Suru. Oh, shoot. I didn't mean to do that. Preview. Kore. Kore. Oh, re. Okay, I was misreading that. Kore. Suru. Suru. It's only through suru, it's only suru doing things that we can get better at them. 
So you need to do them as much as you can. Suru basically means to do, but it's incredibly versatile. It goes beyond its English equivalent. Besides being used alone, it can be put together with a whole range of nouns to turn them into verbs. We call these suru verbs, and you'll learn a lot of them as we go. Okay. What do you want to do for Christmas? Oh, well, I guess I don't mean Bingo. To Bingo apple. Ringo, just ate your apple. Ringo just ate your apple. You were about to take a bite, and he grabbed it. What is Ringo doing snatching apples? Surely he can afford his own. Did you know that Ringo Star once appeared in a Japanese TV commercial for apple juice? That might help you remember this word, too. Ringo is also commonly written in hiragana and even in kanji, but you'll probably see it in katakana the most. Interesting. Ringo. I don't think I even picked up that this was katakana. My katakana is not as good as my hiragana by a good margin. I should study up more on that. Kohi. Kohi. This is the katakana version of the English word coffee. Just watch out for the second syllable, which changes to he in Japanese. Kohi. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Kani Chihuahua says hello. Kani Chihuahua is an amazing talking Chihuahua. She can only say hello, but that alone is pretty impressive. Kani Chihuahua is a formal way to say hello. It's generally used during the daytime, from late morning to early evening. Watch out for the wa on the end, which is always pronounced wa. Hmm. I do get the wa's mixed up. Someone could clarify. That would be great. Coffee. Suru. To do. What was this? That's going to be wrong. This one. Oh, caught it. Okay. Yui. Oh, there's Apple. I don't know if it wants Ringo or Apple. We'll see. Konnichiwa. No, it wants hello. Okay. This one. And then we had uh, Apple. Hello. Alright, 25. Itsu. He eats it and eats it. When does this guy not eat it? Is a question word that he's used to ask when. When? 10,000. The meaning, Monomic. You cut the leaf with your sword in 10,000 pieces made up from leaf and sword. If you can get to 10,000 different pieces, then that means your sword is absolutely perfect. If your sword dulls before you get to 10,000, you have to throw it away. Reading Monomic. Now that you have 10,000 pieces of tiny leaf paper, you decide to turn them into a manga. Man. Each little piece will become a panel. Carefully draw your manga onto these 10,000 leaf pieces. Maybe you should even use your sword again to give them some textured details. You're so creative and talented. 10,000. Man. Inside, within, made up from head and person, there's a person inside your head, and you have no idea how to get them out. They're inside for good, and it's freaking you out. As in, there's a little person in there, running around, controlling your brain. We're talking a rat tattoo little chef situation. People think you're crazy, but you know better. He's inside there, doing evil things, the evil within. Reading Manami. You know this kanji means inside. So you can keep thinking about the person that's inside you, running around. You finally discover him, and you try to take him out. But before you can, he pulls out a knife. Knife. Or just nai. Nai. And threatens to cut you if you do anything irrational. You imagine holding the knife out. Threatening. Imagine him holding the knife out. Threatening to stab your brain. 
It's a conundrum here. If you don't take him out, you're in trouble. But if you do try to take him out, he might stab you in the brain with his knife. Try to think a way around this situation, focusing mainly on his knife. Nai, for on Yomi at least. Part or minute. Foon or Boon. The fins that fell onto my sword were sliced into two parts made from fin and sword. The logic of this story makes a lot of sense. Even in the kanji itself, the fins are falling onto the sword from above. What happens to things that fall onto swords? They become more than one part. Okay. So like to part ways, you part the fish. Fitting monomic. Now that you've cut the fish, it's time to cut something else into parts. Next on your list is the buns, which need to be split up amongst the people. Think about the buns as absolutely delicious things you want to eat really bad. And since you cut them into carefully portioned parts, you can share them with all your friends. All my friends eat the buns. Boon. Cut. From seven and sword, the seventh sword. Setsu, is that right? If you have seven swords, then there's only so much you could do with them. The main thing, probably using them to cut something. Take these seven swords and swing them around. Cut everything in your path, including yourself. Then think about how dumb it was to try to use seven swords at once. And then feel the pain of the cut you gave yourself. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Feeding Monomic. Because having seven swords for yourself is too much, you decide to take the swords and divide them up amongst pairs of people. You cut them into pairs and give sets, setsu to everyone who needs them in the village. You make sure you think about how you need to give them away in sets and not, and not anything else. This is the most important thing to think about in your head as you're trying to establish the monomic for your kanji reading memory. It's gotta be sets. And we work out with the sword and we work out in sets. Itsu. Itsu. What did it mean? This one? When? Okay. He eat. When does this guy not eat? Okay. When does this guy not eat? When? This was... Part? Or cut? Huh? Let's just go for it. Boot, that's right, you slice the buns. Kanji meaning direction. Ten thousand. Oh no, that was the radical. That was direction. Man, I'm. I blanked out this unit. It was too much info at once. Man, inside. That's straightforward enough. Seven swords. Set. Yes. Boo. Hmm. Okay. Seven swords. Was that cut? Or was boom cut? Okay, there was cut and there was part. Alright. Kanji reading. Mess this up. Is that nai? Ten thousand. Uh, man, man, I I thought of this and I didn't put it in. I lack confidence. Uh, kanji meaning part like the Red Seas. Kanji meaning ten thousand. Ichiman. Well, I guess it would be Ichiman. Kanji meaning inside. I like snake inside of this. Did not know the reading. Nai. Okay. Kanji reading. Man. Na. E. Alright.
Not a great first show. 20. Let's keep going. Friend. You. Made up from a narwhal and stool. A narwhal sitting on the on a stool is your friend. Imagine that narwhal sitting there. It waves its flipper and says, Hi, friend, to you. Reading Manami. Hi, friend, says the narwhal. I must warn you about all the youths. <laughs> your narwhal friend goes on to warn you about all those youths and how they were trying to take away your friendship with their good looks and their young ages. <laughs> hey, friend. Fat. You, meaning made from big and drop. You, you have a big person here with an extra drop of something below their thigh hanging down. That's fat right there. This person has fat hanging off their fat. Maybe you should touch the fat to see what it feels like. Squeeze it. It'll help you remember that this kanji means fat. Reading Manami. This fat person also has a fat tie. Tie. It's really thick and luxurious. Imagine them tying their lovely fat tie. Imagine them trying to tie the tie. But, you can't, but they can't lift their hands around to do it. You have to help them out. Another thing that might help you to remember this kanji's reading is that it's the same reading as dai, or one of the same readings for big. Similar kanji often have similar readings, which is a good thing to know when you have to guess. It's true with this one anyway. Tai. So big, like fire blast. Uh, with a little, little drop there. Few, a little. You have a small slide made from small and slide. The thing about the small slides is they can only fit a few people at a time. Imagine a small slide. How could you not? After you see the radicals, with only a few people on it trying to move forward. Only a few people are required to create a slide traffic jam, though. Few. Only a few people. Okay. Why is there a little traffic jam on the slide? Because the shogun, show, or show, is using the slide and he loves little things. He's forcing everyone to stop and watch, even though there are people backed up behind him. How inconsiderate. Imagine this in your head, a traffic jam on a little slide, all because the shogun is using it. Picture some caution tape, orange cones, and Japanese Secret Service members all making sure no one gets close to the shogun while he slides. Few people are crying. They want to slide. They want to leave. Show. A few people want to slide. Okay, kind of looks like a face to me, kind of making a grimace, kind of like a... Hmm. Pull from bow and stick. If you have a bow and a stick, you need to pull the two back together to shoot it. If you can't pull it, you won't be shooting anything. Imagine taking a stick and pulling it back to, into your bow. Imagine how hard you have to pull. This thing is really strong. Reading Monomic. When you pull the bow back, your body strains and you feel immense heat. Heat. Rise inside of you. You keep pulling and the heat grows hotter and hotter. Imagine using all your strength to pull on this bow. Imagine the heat rising in your body. There's sweat dripping down your face. It's so hot, but you have to keep pulling. Pull. He. Cow. Made up from just cow. Meaning monomic. The radical and the kanji for cow are exactly the same. That makes it easy to remember, so long as you know your radicals well enough. Should distinguish this from the noon kanji. Try thinking of the bit poking out the top of the, this kanji as the cow's head. That's easy enough. You. Have you ever heard of Wagyu beef? That's, that's gyu. That gyu is this gyu. Okay. I hope you know what Wagyu beef is. Otherwise, this, this will be a difficult one to learn. Don't worry, I have her. I know about the beef. I've tasted the beef, and I don't have beef with the beef. That Wagyu beef. Just that gyu, like a gyu dog. <laughs> this was, what was this face? He? No, that was for Bo. Bo was he. Or pull. Pull the bow. Just, just give me the truth. Few. Okay, you make, you make this little face when you have just a few friends, I guess. Few, little. That was also show, I think. Uh, 
Is this the narwhal one? His friend? Yes, it was. Uh, he. Kanji reading for fat was Thai. Show. Yes, fat. Kanji meaning few. It's a few friends. Kanji reading. Well, he, well, he was wondering about the youths. You. Kanji meaning pull. That bow. Kanji meaning cow. Reading you. I think there was another you there. Alright, that one was not too bad. Lesson 15. Let's keep rolling. Stop. Sh just reading she. The stop radical is the same as the stop kanji. No, your radicals, yo. You have to stop because there is a sheep, she, in front of you. Try to walk around the sheep, but it moves to stop you in front of you again. Every time the sheep stops you, you stop too. Imagine the fluffy wool of the sheep stopping you from moving forward. You can't push past it no matter how hard you try. Machine. Ooh. From private and mouth. You have a private mouth. That's a machine. Okay. But you have to keep your machine mouth private because it would scare all the non-machine people around you. Doesn't this kanji look like a machine mouth? Now, wouldn't you want to keep that private from the people you know? <laughs> what the heck? Okay. <laughs> so make sure they can't tell you what's machine and what's human. You dye, dye the mouth to make it look like skin. You find dye the same shade as your normal mouth and you slap it on there. Imagine being so afraid that people will find out about your machine mouth that you have to dye it to match a normal human mouth. Oh, when will the discrimination t against machine kind end? Very good. Okay, machine mouth. Or er, private and mouth. My hidden machine mouth. What do you do with the robot mouth? That's for you guys to decide. Outside, evening, and toe. You, you're known to get the ailment evening toe. Which is when your toe catches on fire after getting really, really hot. Imagine this happening. Ouch. The only way to fix it is to cool your toe down, and the best way to do that is to go outside. After imagining your evening toe overheating, rush outside to fix it. It's the best way to prevent fire toe, which is way worse. In the evening, it's nice and cold outside too, so feel this on your skin and feel the cool, cold air on your toe, which is starting to get some relief. Okay, outside. You go outside and you're not supposed to be out there at night. And you're accosted by a couple of guys. Then all of a sudden, Guy Fox. Guy. <laughs> yeah, Guy. Guy. -y. Guy Fox jumps around from the roof above you, takes them out, and then starts running. Guy Fox! You yell after him. If you don't know Guy Fox, you should do a little reading up on him to make this monomic make sense. Also, anonymous people wear a Guy Fox mask if. That's any help. You know, anons. You know what I'm talking about. Them anons. Mother, mom, ha ha. The sun lets out one drop and then another drop. The drops dance together in the air. Combine when they hit the ground. Up sprouts your mother. I think, I think remembering the kanji has this as its own radical. Picture these two drops of the sun morphing before your very eyes. Until they look exactly like your Dior old mom. She's bright and shining like the sun. She's looking down at you. Her big drop eyes full of tears. I should know. Uh, remembering the kanji makes this makes this breast. And that's way easier to internalize. I will not lie to you. Um, but this seems more pure. Suddenly your mother points at you and laughs. Ha ha. She keeps laughing. Ha 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 ha. Over and over, you start to feel uncomfortable. You thought your mother was going to say something sweet or profound or motherly. And instead, she's just pointing and saying, ha ha, over and over. Yeah, that sounds like my mom. Mom's weird, Koichi. You got a weird mom. Yamabiko. Yamabiko. Mountain echo. Yama for mountain, or I guess biko must be an echo by itself. 
you know that that sad means mountain. And the hiragana uh, biko at the end gives you echo. That's because be children. <laughs> what? That's because be children be love echoes, especially mountain echoes. Kind of like Mountain Dew, but for echoes. Imagine baby bees buzzing as loudly as they can and hearing their voices echoing back at them through the mountains. As the Anji suggests, mountain Biko, was it Biko, is generally used to describe the echo you get if you shout in the mountains. To describe other types of echoes, you can use the, kata, the katakana word. Uh, my katakana's rough, fellas. Uh, ko? I'm not sure. By the way, there is actually a kanji for the second part of this word, but it's so rare, it's usually written in kana. You learn this kanji reading when you learn the vocabulary for mountain or san or yama. Yamabiko, in this case. Yamabiko. 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 All right. Got that machine mouth. Was it just machine by itself? Is what it read? You dye it. You dye it skin color. Dye? Mother? Mother, who? Uh, stop. Fire toe. Hot foot. Oh, gosh, what did it actually mean? He don't. That's not going to be right. What is that? B by itself? Oh, guy. Guy. Not ka, because it's got the. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha. Meaning machine. Reading she. You try to stop the sheep, or the sheep is stopping you. Country meaning. Guy Fox. Why did he have a Guy Fox mask in this? Um, evening toe. It was on fire. I'm going to say cool. I don't doubt myself. Outside. You go outside when your foot's on fire. That's right. Uh, guy. Outside. Mountain Echo Biko meaning Echo Yama Biko Yama Biko Alright Only two more sets How are we doing time wise? 33 minutes? Yeah, that's not a bad video Table no ue Okay Table no Ue? Table no ue. Table top. I wonder where the ue comes from. First, we have a kanakana word, so it's safe to assume it's a loan word. Like many loan words, it comes from English. Say it out loud, and what do you have? That's right, table. Then comes the particle no, which just joins two nouns together. Finally, we have oh ue like up, which you learn means up or above. Put all these pieces together and we have the meaning on the table or tabletop. Okay, that checks out. Reading Manama. In this phrase, ue is a standalone word. So it uses the same reading that you learned when you learned the vocab. Easy to stay on top of that one, right? Okay. Actually, that actually does make sense. Teburu. Teburu no ue. Table no ue. Bed no shita. Bed below the bed. Bed no shita. Bed oh bed do bed no bed no shita. It starts with another katakana word, so you can assume that it's a loan word. This one also comes from English. Can you figure out what it means? 
That's right, bed. Then comes the particle no, which joins two nouns together. And finally we have shita, which you learn means down or below. Put these elements together, and you get below the bed, under the bed, or beneath the bed. What's under your bed? Dead bodies. And shita. Uh, shita is a standalone word here. So it uses the same reading that you learned when you learned the vocab. Okay. Hinode. Hinode. Sunrise. What do we call the sun's exit from the horizon? That'll be the sunrise. Oh, that's kind of cute. Uh, imagine the sun exiting the horizon and climbing up in the sky. This uses the kanji's kunyomi reading, which you've already learned. As long as you remember those, you should be good to go. Hino de. Hino de. Like deguchi for to exit, but just the de. He for sun. Hino de. Okay. Nigiri sujin. Nigiri sujin. A British person. Nigiri sujin. Nigiri su. I guess it means Great Britain or United Kingdom. So what is a Great Britain person? You get it. You guessed it. A British person or a Brit. Reading monomic. Oftentimes, when two kanji come together to form a kanji compound or jukoku, uh, you use the onyomi readings. This is similar to that, though instead of another kanji, it's a foreign word. This pattern works with almost any country as well. Just add Jean to a country name, and you've described the people who live there. You'll see more of these before you're finished. And since Jean has two Onyomi readings, here's a monomic to help you remember which one to use, as well with all the words for nationalities. The Jean here is pronounced Jean. All nationalities, including Brits, love Jeans. Okay. I wonder if the DR, for me, I'm Dominican, uh, would be Dominica Jean? I wonder. America Jin. America Jin. The America part is pretty easy so long as you know katakana, which admittedly, mine is not great. Uh, it's the word for America. You know that Jin means person, so you can figure out that America plus, plus person equals American person. Remember the end is pronounced Jinko, so look for that. Is it Jinko? It sounds like it just ends in the gene. America Jin. Hmm. Reading monomic. Oftentimes on two kind con- Oh, that's the same as before. Here's the monomic to help you remember which ones to use. Americans absolutely love their genes. It's a well known fact. America Jin. Alright. Table no ue. Te. Ta. I'm not actually sure how it wants me to express this in hiragana. Te. Ta. Yi. Bo. Tai. I don't think that's right. No. So it's te dash buru te buru no ue ta te dash buru no ue. Table no ue. Okay. He no de, I think. He no de. He no de. Yes. This is the under the bed. Oh. Yeah. 
would mean under the bed. The bed. That's not right because there's two characters. Hmm. How would you make bed three characters? Bed. Maybe a a long. Get it? Eh. Be, eh, do. No. Stop. Can't be right. Be, do. Be, do. Bed, no, stop. Bed. Is that a little, uh, it's probably the double, double D sound. American? Brit, Iguru, Suji? E Bo No U E Te Bo Bu Bu Te Buru Teburu, Teburu. Sunrise. I'm in, I'm gonna go for a Manikajin again. I'm not sure. Okay, no, that worked. Be- Bedo Bedo Oh, double D, double D Bedo No Shita Is that right? Bedo no shita Yes Okay Amerikaji? I think this looks like a P, which stung me off at the start. Amerikaji? Amerikaji? Yes, sick. So this got to be Igiri Suji? E. E. Oh. Let me just take Brit. It does. Te dash te boru te boru te biru boru no. Did I did I just have a typo there? Te buru no ue. E gi ri. Igirisujin. Yes. Te. Bu. 
Oh, did I do bow before? That is what it did. Taboo. Do. No. She. Ta. Ah, oh, come on. Alright. Te. Boo. Oh, it's just a typo. I did re instead of ru. Gosh. Table no ue. Table no. Also, the cheetah instead of ue. Whoops. Whoops. Te. Bo. No, boo. Te boo. Ru. What did I do before? Ri. Ru. Table. No. Ue. Table no ue. Alright. Very good. Do a salute for ue. Um. Oh, this is the same thing. Table. Top. Alright. That took quite a bit of effort. Will not lie. Uh, probably because my katakana is pretty weak. Um, but maybe with the introducing it here, it will get better. This is it. The final round for, for this. Francujin. Oh, gosh. The Frenchman. Francujin. Francujin. This is France. So what is a... A France person, that would be a French person. French p person loves their jeans too. France jean. France jean. France. Mm. Mi dama. Marble. Mi dama. Like Medama before Metal Man before. When you see a katakata word, it's safe to bet that it's a foreign loan word from somewhere else. This one's interesting because it combines katakana and kanji. That is interesting. The first marble came to Japan from Portugal. So the me part comes from is short for the word vidro. Oh glass, which means glass in Portuguese. Uh, anyway, but don't get thrown off the the me part. Maybe just imagine that your favorite marble is black and, and yellow, like a bee. Or bee, bee, not me. Bee dama. Bee dama. Oh, bee dama. Uh, uh, things are making sense. Okay. Uh, if you know katakana as well as the reading that you sh that you learned when you learned the kanji. You should be able to read this. Just watch out for the Ren Dak. I don't know what that means. Um, if someone could explain that, that'd be that'd be fantastic. Ren Daku. Bidama. Bidama. Nin. Nin. Number of people. Counter. When you see this on a number, for example, seven nin or three nin, you are using it to count people. Just remember both Ichi Nin and Nijin have alternate readings from three and up. It's just the number plus Nijin like this five people That's Boingin? I'm not sure uh, Ten people is oh go Go Nijin ten is Nin. Oh Nin. It's still just Nin. I don't know why I was doing that Uh. 10 is, is Junin, uh, etc. This is the counter for people, which makes the, the this the word for number of people. This is a counter, which usually means onyomi reading for this kanji. Since Nin has two onyomi reading, here's a monomic to help you remember which one to use. Just think of the sheer number of people at Nintendo. Very relevant, Nin. Uh, it must be huge. This really is just a counter for people that work at Nintendo. Easy, easy money. Okay. Otonashi. Otonashi. Quiet or calm. Remember when you learned that that otona means adult? Well, this is just the adjective version of that. The I adjective 
See how it ends in E? Uh, what adjective do adults want to be able to use for their own kids? They want to say they are obedient, quiet kids. You already learned this reading when you learned the, uh, was it Otona? Otona, si. Otona. You should be able to read this too. The E adjective. Okay. Onna no shito. Onna no shito. Woman. If I get, I guess, is it hito? Onna no shito. Yeah, it kind of sounded like it, she was in there. But maybe that's just a compression artifact. Onna no hito. Okay. Yeah, it's clear on the female one, at least for me. The no particle makes it so that the lean belongs to the woman. Basically, it's like literally means a woman person or a person of woman it's more polite to say plain old woman though so all you have to remember is that this word is actually two separate words combined with a particle so since you treat them like separate words you read each of them with the kuniomi readings they're both single kanji words all alone that being said in level one one you learned uh, about the vocab readings for the separate words so use that knowledge to remember the reading for this word as well. Okie doke. Onna no hito. Onna no hito. Onna no hito. Onna no hito. Okay. Onna no hito. Onna no hito. What did I do wrong here? Oh, there's no mitten. Of course. Person. Then she. Otona she. Doesn't feel right. Oh. To. Na. She. Okay, that was for quiet, I think. Quiet, yeah. Bidama, marble. Person just meaning being me. Person. My katakana man this is rough. Oh, food and sujin. Warm. Oh, this is the actual reading. Oh, n, na, no, g. Where did I go wrong? O n na no oh it's hito not jean. Onna no hito. Okay. Bi dama. Bi dama. Jean. No, no, it's nin here. Nin. Nin. Fura. Fu. Fra. Mm -hmm. Su. Jin. Uran su jin. Sick. Uh. Woman. Woman person. Uh. Frenchman. Yes, reading. Oh, because I messed up before. <laughs> I was wondering why it was coming back. Oh, n, na, no, he, to. Onna no hito. We did it, fellas. Uh, that's the start of level three. Um, I'll keep posting as I continue along my ways. Have a great night. Happy New Year.